All right. Well, I'm sure we'll get some more coming on uh, as we get going, judging by how many people had uh, had registered versus what's logged in now. But uh, and every time I do these, I always hope that the time uh, and the fact that you know daylight savings and the fact that Arizona never moves our clocks uh, doesn't mess people up. So. Uh, that's why I always like to say Arizona time instead of Mountain Standard or anything goofy like that. So I wanted to um, do a webinar and, and kind of talk about, um, you know, just kind of what we've observed some tracks doing, what we're doing uh, locally down the road at Chandler BMX uh, to, to bring new people into the sport. Um, I had wanted to find some people that, you know, wanted to talk about uh, if they're from a cold weather area what they do in terms of prepping their track. And I kind of put some feelers out to get, I got some good responses, but then unfortunately some people had other commitments and, and couldn't make that. Uh, what I, what I did get though, was a, uh, something that I've talked about before, uh, that somebody prepared for me and, uh, and, and I've made it available on the TO dashboard. And so we'll kind of cover where that's at, which was, uh, a, a great, piece written up by a track operator of uh, 15, 20 years or so uh, from Toledo, Ohio, that did a great piece on on what he does to prep his track each and every year uh, and, and getting down into, you know, checking the the chemical makeup of the dirt and 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 the and the pH level. And I mean, he, he really gets into it. So uh, great document, and now it's available as a as a resource on the tap, on the TO dashboard. So I will show you that. Um, we'll go go through, and and I'll show some things that I that I've done uh, here kind of recently for tracks, kind of promotional things, and uh, and talk about that. I'm gonna say up front, I had blocked off two hours for this thing. I may be unable to take it much longer than an hour. Um, I don't know if if. Those of you who are on Friends Book may know, but uh, my wife works for a dog and cat veterinary clinic, and and uh, so she has her hours that she works. But if they have an emergency, uh, then it's a no go. She can't just punch out of the of the surgery center and and leave in the middle of a surgery. So I might have to go get my my boy Porter. So we'll see how that goes. At least that that won't be till about six ten uh, my time. So another hour, good hour or so. So. Um, We'll go through this if there's any questions, of course, uh, bring them up as we go um, or at the end, you know, I'm happy to answer questions as, as long as I can. So let's uh, let's get going. And all right, PowerPoint. What are we doing to PowerPoint freeze? I guess we can go through it one slide at a time if it's not going to play nice. And it really isn't, is it? That's how my day's gone. Uh, so let's uh, let's. Oh, I don't want to do that. From current slide, okay. But it's not. It's not going to do the transitions. Yeah, this is. This is perfect. All right. Well, let's. Uh, Let's go through and do it then. Uh, track preparation. So again, and, and and if anybody who's who's on here has some best practices, whatever that they'd like to share, hey, uh, and, and you've got either a phone, you've got a, a, a microphone, whatever, um, and would like to talk, let me know. Shoot me a a text message or a chat or something, and say, hey, you know, I, I'm happy to explain kind of some of the things that we're doing. Uh, that certainly was my intent to get somebody to to talk about that stuff. In the absence of that, uh, what I did find and, and dig up was this great piece that Brad Moore from Speedway BMX had done. So right now, if you go to the track operator dashboard and you go into the track resources downloads areas, you'll see something over here that says track preparation. If you then drill into that, you'll get to this track preparation page. It'll look like this. And it'll say, click here to download the track grooming PDF. So let's pop over there and we'll go take a look at that thing. Because it's pretty cool. He did a great job with it. So this is uh, 
what it looks like. He talks about, you know, for 15 years, and this is written a few years ago um, by Brad. So, you know, he goes through the whole process, um, getting to know your dirt, avoid, you know, lessons learned, avoid blue clay. Um, and, and he mentions that this is all kind of situational. Dirt around the country is different. And, you know, what, what works in one area uh, in terms of like chemicals to treat the dirt does not work at all in other areas. You know, um, some of you may use calcium chloride for others. It's just a waste and, and using a, a nasty product to deal with for no, for no reason. So he goes through everything here um, and, and talks about uh, the different product uh, products that he uses. Um, it all consists of a polymer emulsion that can encapsulate particulate materials. This basically means binding sand, clay, organics. Biggest difference we found in products was cost. And a big difference between suppliers, so be careful. And and and, uh, and he talks about calcium chloride, petroleum-based products, immediately taken off your list for rider safety and harmful runoff concerns. So, yeah, uh, you know he's he's a guy who says, hey, no, no, you got to steer clear of that calcium chloride. Other tracks I know have used it. Um, ask the road commission what they use in your region for erosion and dust control. So he talks about all of this stuff. Um, he goes through, talks about once the spring and, and is gone and the frost is gone and the surface of the ground, it's time to begin. The ground may still be muddy and cold, but once there's some moisture in the soil, it's it's easiest to work with when there's some moisture. And, and he talks about tracks using the old school methods like the drag behind a quad, um, which he says, hey, you know, that's fine. But the problem with that is. Uh, that he's found is that it's going to take the lips off of jumps and it fills in the rollers. And so every time you're dragging your track, if it's pulling that dirt off of high areas and pulling it into lower areas, you're just breaking your track down. So uh, what he likes to do is is to just basically do it old school with good old volunteers. And, and, and he says, plan on about 60 to 80 man hours. But this way, he says, we can do it all with hand rakes and control that the it's not eating away the lips of all the obstacles or filling in obstacles so they're not as deep. Uh, so, and, and he talks about, hey, once this thing is raked out, then it's ready to, to bring in the additives, you know, whatever chemicals he's gonna put in the track. And he talks about the average pH of soil for plant life. And, and you know, he talks about how he's got a worm problem. There's pictures of the worms. And so he talks about, adjusting the pH of the soil so it drives the worms away that you know might otherwise uh, hurt his his dirt hurt his track uh, but it's not really harmful to him they it just they don't like the pH that he keeps his track at so really gets into some good specifics talks about everything so this document is out there now um, and I encourage you no matter where you're at what type of dirt you have this is a great document to download read, you know, talk it over with some of your track crew about, you know, what you think of the of the content that's in there and whether you agree with it, disagree with it. There you see a tote of uh, some of the chemical that he uses to to do the dirt there. So uh, and again, goes goes into sealing the turns, uh, really talks about everything. And there's the national at his track and and the and dirt turns for this track. This is uh, you know was not a an asphalt turn track. So I mean he's he's really got to do a lot of maintenance on those turns. So he's really worked hard to learn the dirt, learn the chemicals that he can use to minimize that maintenance. So again, this is a great document uh, available on the track operator. So again, go to the track resources, go to downloads, and there's now a track preparation link there that will link you right to that PDF and that great piece that Brad Moore did. So I certainly want to thank Brad Moore Speedway BMX for getting that to us. Uh, sorry, just confirming with my wife that yes, if she does get late that I will go get him. So, uh, all right. So let's see, moving on. So the next thing I want to talk about is, uh, is this concept of a sign-up day. Is this thing, let me try this again. No, it's not. 
just isn't liking me today. So a sign up day. So a lot of tracks I know are, are utilizing this concept of, of having a sign up day. And really the concept was to keep potential customers away from existing BMXers. And I'll make this available uh, for you guys to, to get later from existing BMXers that might unsell them before they even get started in BMX. So some of you have heard about, and if you haven't heard about, there's a great video that Donnie Robinson put out about his beginner league program. So, you know, we had uh, two track operators that, that incorporated the beginner league, uh, Donnie, Mike Carruth, uh, Jackie Altizer, uh, Ray from Napa came in, and we all sat down with, with basically the entire track department, uh, B.A. Anderson, John David, really the whole team in this conference room and went over the, the their beginner league program from front to back. And, and one of the foundations of the beginner league program and what makes it successful for them was this idea of of keeping the newbies away from existing riders, you know. And, and so, you know, what, what Donnie says is, look, you know, I want them to be as comfortable as possible in that situation. So he's going to do a five week program with them where he meets with those kid kids two days a week uh, and, and not at a race or a practice time. We're talking another time at the track uh, during the day, during the week. And one day is going to be instruction and the other day is going to be mock racing going on, uh, but only with all beginners. So it's all brand new people um, getting grouped up. And, so a sign-up day, kind of the same thing, not really intended to be existing riders coming out and using it as a practice. And Chandler BMX right down the road, and Chandler's going to be celebrating its 40th anniversary this uh, Saturday and Sunday with a big event on Saturday and uh, a lot going on there, old school show and, and everything. But Chandler BMX does a BMX open house on the first Saturday of every month. And there you see the sign hanging on the fence uh, that says, hey, this is only for non-members and all ages and skill levels are welcome. Although if you're a non-member, you, if you were a good skill level, you're just a mountain biker. First Saturday of every month, eight to 11. So Chandler does not race on Saturday. They do not practice on Saturdays. The only thing they might have going on on Saturdays is birthday parties. But every Saturday on the first Saturday of the month from eight to 11, it's beginner day. And they've got a staff of people that, that goes out there and works with these kids. And Chandler BMX is on, a, is on a big upswing in terms of their rider count because of this beginner day. And so really for them, sign-up day happens on the first Saturday of every month. Um, but if you're a track in a cold weather area, and I've seen a lot of them on Facebook um, that are advertising, hey, like this is the open house day and it's before the season starts. It's not intended for existing riders to come out and practice. This is our open house day. Come out and find out about BMX. Why? Well, it gives newbies their own time to learn and get comfortable and get comfortable at their own pace and give them 100% of your staff's attention. You know, and for Chandler BMX, you know, not only do does does uh, does Corey organize these open houses with with Rennie Dyer and Chandler BMX, he goes out to school. So here you see him set up out on a basketball uh, court at a, at a at a school. Here you see him set up at another facility. You see a lot of other uh, youth sport people set up in tents, but but there's his setup right there with the two kids on nice balance bikes. Uh, there again, he's inside of a school assembly. Uh, you know, getting into the schools is is and and always was and always will be the holy grail of BMX marketing. I mean, if you can get into the school, you're going right to your target audience. And, you know, I love the use of look at the little kids always on the balance bikes showing that BMX, unlike most other sports, is a sport that you can bring them in at almost the youngest age possible. What, what other sport can bring kids in at two, three, four years old. Heck, I've seen one-year-olds in balance bike classes. So uh, that's an incredible thing that you can basically lock them into our sport at such a young age. And again, um, what I really wanted to, to if, if you're a track that hasn't hit your opening day yet, um, 
I really suggest in all of your marketing efforts leading up to opening day, come up with a sign up day. If you're a track that's already doing that, I love it. Um, and, and again, rather than being a practice day for your existing riders, you know, what I would do is say, look, open house day, sign up day for newbies is all about them. You guys stay off the track. If you want to come down, if you're an older expert rider and you want to come down to my track on that day and help mentor the new people and answer questions, man, that's great. And you know what? I'll, I'll pay the $25 practice fee for whoever comes and helps on that day to have their own practice day for them or their kids or whatever some other time. And, and the track is just for you guys who helped is what I would do personally. Um, but I love the idea of sign up day. Here's some more pictures from, from Corey and some of these uh, new clinics that he's got. And you see, I mean, they, they are really using a fleet of loaner bikes. You see everybody look at the red lines, right? So obviously they got the deal on the red lines. There's a strider right there. So, you know, these kids are basically using all loaner bikes, loaner helmets, um, but coming out there, sorry, we're jumping ahead. I don't know why this thing is not, is not performing in slideshow mode. Uh, but I love the concept of a sign up day. So if you're a track that uh, hasn't opened up, if you have opened up, think about doing something like Chandler does where you're, you're just taking and saying, hey, you know what? You can come out and sign up anytime you want at Chandler BMX. You can be a brand new person that shows up uh, tomorrow night on Friday night, race night, and buy a membership and get on the track and race that night. Um, but to have a separate day for them where you give them, you know, two, three hours of their own time to get comfortable on the track without other expert riders buzzing around them. Uh, I think that's a special thing and I think it makes people comfortable. And again, it's the cornerstone of what Mike Carruth and Donnie Robinson believe in, in their beginner league, which we really think is going to be kind of the wave of the future in ramping people into the sport of BMX. Um, so, you know, those people are, are basically doing, uh, you know, a month long membership, a temporary membership that they can only go to the, the beginner league. Uh, they cannot show up at a race and race. Uh, that's not part of what that package is. And so uh, we're going to continue to monitor the success of the beginner league in, in hopes of, of rolling that out full scale to all of the tracks. So next, I, I kind of wanted to talk about, uh, and I've shown this before, just, you know, again, some of the things that are available on the track operator dashboard. We get in here to the track points and you've got your my track points. And of course, there's some did you know things in here. Uh, always with the track points, general info. Uh, we've got we've got uh, the top 10 tracks of 2016. You can see who those are. Uh, but we've got the details of the track points program here that will outline, for example, the fact that new full members are now worth 10 points per single point race for their first five races rather than five points. That's a big difference because now rather than capping out at being a 30 point membership, uh, assuming they haven't moved up to intermediate, which would give them another 25, but uh, rather than capping out at 30 points, that means a new member is potentially worth 55 points and that's big. So, so we've got that on there. And then when you get into the my track points, there's a ton of data here, folks. And, and if this is the first time you're seeing that because you're a fairly new track operator, uh, this is all the riders that have renewed their memberships and credited this track, Rum River BMX. Uh, there's, uh, and look at all the information that's here, their serial number, what type of member are they? R for renewal, N for new membership, their proficiency, last name, their start date of when they became a member in BMX and their application date from when they renewed or, or, uh, or bought the brand new membership. The difference between these two things are the number of years they've been in the sport when you talk about uh, the renewals and how many points. Here's the date of the last race that they competed in, what type of race it was, the track that their last race was at, what type of, of race was it? Gold Cup. There was one, his last race was the National, right? Gold Cup, Gold Cup, District, Gold Cup. And you can see these dates. So this is great. Think about this as a from a track operator perspective 
If this, here's this guy, hasn't been back since the Gold Cup in February. So we're now into March. This person hasn't been back. You see, we were already scored through, well, there's a Rum River race from 311. So we know we've scored that 311 race. So this person did the Gold Cup, but they haven't been back. Maybe, maybe they're from a ways away. Um, and, and we can kind of look at, look at that data about that rider, but then we can reach out to those riders that maybe haven't been back to our track in a while. Uh, win count, win count is awesome because now you know who's getting close to moving up to that next proficiency and getting you move up points, the race count. And by race count, we're talking single point races, the ones that matter for track points. Uh, the number of membership points that the person has given you, which if they've done zero races is only five. But of course, if they've done, you know, their five races and their uh, third year renewal, then they're maxing you out at 30 points. Advancement points, did they move up? So here's somebody that moved up to expert or moved up to girl, uh, got 50 points, and then the total points that they're giving you your track. So a lot of information here. And if you're logged in as what we consider a super user, which basically should be the track operator, might be somebody else, but it's basically somebody who calls me or, or one of my staff and says, hey, you know what? I want to access the data, the contact info that's on my track operator dashboard. Uh, and basically, we're going to verify that either A, you're the track operator or B, that the track operator says, yeah, you know what? It's okay for this person to have that level of access to the data because you're basically getting full contact information for these riders. But if I click this and I download this file, if I open that file, there's all the contact. Uh, where is my contact info? You know what? I'm not a super user for that track. <laughs> so if you're not a super user, this is the file that you get downloaded is going to look exactly like the screen. If you're the super user, and let me go remedy that real quick. Or you know what? Let me just switch tracks. How about that? Uh, I should be a super user for... Hmm. I'm going to guess Chandler. Okay, it should have switched. No, nope, switch to Chandler. This is just one of these days for me. Well, let me turn Wi-Fi on and see if I'm getting better performance out of that. But... Being the super user basically gives you, uh, basically gives you the ability to download uh, that same CSV file, but it contains their address, city, state, zip, postal code, phone number, and email address. Yeah, this is just par for the course for me right now. I'm afraid. All right, so let's go in here and make me, well, actually, i got to go in and find Rum River. There I am. I'm not the super user there. And so now we can go in and make me the super user. Yeah. Okay, so now let's go back in here and say, now give me that file and let's see. There we go. Address, city, state, postal code, phone, and email. So now I could call if I if I want to look at this and say, wow, here's the last race of these people. And there's their phone number. I can call them up and say, hey, Bobby, where have you been, man? We've missed you. You know, come back out. Here's a here's a coupon for a, a free open with a paid class entry. You know, whatever it is, you could shoot them an email offer. Uh, any number of things that you could do logged in as a super user. So this is something that I can tell you a lot of tracks, you know, every track that I get on the phone with one-on-one -on -one and tell about this wants to be made the super user and they realize the potential of this data. Same is true with potential riders. Now, potential riders are riders that renewed last year and credited your membership, but they haven't, haven't had to renew this year, but they haven't renewed this year yet. So they're a potential rider. Once they actually renew and, and credit their membership to your track, then they move from the potential tab 
to the pointed tab, right? So, but potential is a list of everybody that if, especially if they're a, a member who, who bought a full membership last year, like their membership type was something other than a one day, those people should renew. If they don't, um, well, now you've got contact info for them. So again, I can hit download as a CSV, get all the contact info for these people. So, and you can sort, right? You can click on any of these columns and sort by last name, first name, whatever. So it'll sort in ascending order, descending order, right? So there's alpha by uh, one day and descendings uh, by alphabetical order. So we can click. So look at all the one days. There's all the one day trial memberships that this track did that those kids never came back and converted to a full. Pages and pages of kids that try, right? Look, I mean, we're still we're still just in trials and I'm trying to hit where we see uh, 2017. So these are all these are all people that this track could, you know, go back and say, hey, you know what? I wanna, and, and, you, and you know what day they did the one day, it's only a one day membership. So what was their last race date? Well, it's right here, expires on. So I know that this Jason Klein did a one day membership on 1227, must have come out for a practice since that was during the off season. But he came out, did a practice, but he never came back. Here we get into 2017. Okay, so these were going not just by date, obviously, but there's a 2017 one. Mavis LaRoe, so did a one day, hasn't, maybe he's converted to full now and I just don't have the app yet, but right now we still see him as a one day that hasn't converted. So there is a ton of information here. And again, being the super user allows you to download contact information and really make the most and maximize your track points. So when we talk about making the most out of the riders we that you have, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about drilling into that, uh, drilling into that screen basically to analyze that data and download that data. Now, for tracks that are truly trying to make the most of, of the riders that they have, they're doing things like this. And this was great. So all of you who are on the track operator Facebook page that, that Sarge does, they saw Mark Coates post this. Even Mark Coates will say, hey, this was not my idea, but this is something that I'm doing. And it is a great idea. It was a great idea. First time I heard of it was Sarasota doing this. So I believe that Sarasota was the first to come up with this race to five plaque. And, uh, and, and, and Hornet's Nest and Mark Coates took that idea and did, you know, did designed a beautiful plaque. And so every time the kids race, they're getting a... A uh, little sticky to put right here in each of these five circles. Once the kid fills up the five circles, the kid gets the plaque, right? So you're not giving them the plaque when they come out for their first day and get only one sticky. He's leaving those hung up so the kids can come back and they want to get to five so that they can take that plaque home with them. It's a brilliant idea. And if you're not doing something like this, I encourage you to think about doing something like this. And it doesn't have to be something like a plaque. It can be some other type of award. And it doesn't have to be a, a hey, we're putting a sticky on it every time. One of the things that, that going back to Rum River, what Rum River is doing now is, uh, is Kevin got with me. And Kevin knows that, that, you know, that, that I'm uh, kind of a reports guy, right? I enjoy uh, getting requests from track operators. And so what Kevin looked at is, hey, I want to know I want you to send me a CSV file of the riders that with how many single point races they've done. And, and I want that if they've hit five, I want to know when they've hit five, right? So of course I modified one of the existing queries that I have, and this is right out of SQL server, but I send him basically a CSV file that looks like this every month. And so he emails me and, and here it goes. So this is all of the people who hit their fifth race this year that have, credit their membership to his track, and they've hit their fifth race in 2017. So there they are. So he's got that list. So rather than doing it this way, Kevin's getting it. Hey, once they hit five, Brad, I want to know. And, and he realizes it's going to be a week, a week or two later because he's got to get us the race, score it, and then ultimately I'm going to. But, but he's doing a big presentation to those kids 
and giving them something once they've hit their their five, right? So uh, again, and 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 all of those tracks, Sarasota, uh, Hornet's Nest, Rum River, they're all tracks at the top of at the top or right next to the top of their state, and they they know, hey, I got that member, and if I can get them to race five, I've maximized what I can get out of that rider. You know, I, I've maximized the number of points. The only other thing I can do there is is provide good coaching for them and coach them up to go through those novice ranks, hit intermediate, and get me move up points, right? So if you're not doing, if you're not getting your data, if you're not thinking about ways like this to encourage your riders to hit five single point races, uh, I encourage you to do so because that's what the best tracks are doing. Can it, uh, can race manager, uh, highlight a rider's fifth race? Uh, it can't, but that's not to say that's not functionality that we can't talk about for, uh, for the future. Um, and, and, and again, assuming that the track had the same database, like, you know, but, but yeah, I mean, it's certainly something you guys are, you guys have a database of, of your races as well. Right. So once you and, and unless you've prepared some you know phony races that might uh, mix up that that number yeah i mean it, it's certainly a possibility it's data in a database and as long as the data is in the database a report can be written to extract that data out of it and and give it back to the people um and on that front uh i, I just kind of want to talk about uh the commitment that that you know that our management made in uh, in in race manager and and website and and uh, they've allocated more more budget to be spent towards doing things like speeding the development of functionality in race manager. In particular, uh, what the programmer is working on now is that TORF functionality right from the program that I've wanted for so long, and uh, and and that's kind of going to be a, a two phase thing where. Uh, it creates a TORF, gives you a PDF to keep for your records and to, and to upload. So we've got a, a nice PDF version of, of what, what looks like what you're filling out now, only a nice computer-generated PDF version of it, um, but also a file that can be pushed up to the website that then our website development team would read in that file and it would basically say, hey, you've uploaded five races the total for your five races as read in by the file is X amount of dollars, uh, either USD or CAD. And then whatever the card on file was for the track that was on file, the system would charge the card uh, on file and send you a receipt and that process is done. So just automating that process that we took that process in, in kind of did that TORF uploader uh, which is great. It's better than mail. It saves the tracks on a ton of postage. It gets the paperwork here faster. Um, but still from our end, uh, it's a lot of work. I mean, you can imagine every PDF that you guys are sending us, uh, whether it's the front and back of a member, if it's the front and back of a membership application, you know, we're having to print that out on real paper to simulate you mailing us that paperwork. So we're going through reams and reams and reams of paper and, uh, you know, again, it's saving the postage, but we can get better, we can get more streamlined, we can get more automated. And, uh, and that's something that we're trying to do. So, again, coming into this year, they've allocated a lot more uh, of the budget to go towards that computer development to try to get things pushed through quicker. So, things like that out of Race Manager, I think, uh, especially we've brought on a second programmer uh on on to specifically to to help do race manager stuff and and the guy's kind of a reporting guy and so i, I think that stuff that as he gets up to speed uh on the database and how the program works and everything we can get things like that and get it very quickly all right so uh again i, I didn't have a ton prepared here but i do want to show some stuff so now I want to talk about something that we were we were going to do for a long time. And, uh, you know, it was one of those things we talked about it and said, yeah, hey, we need that. And it was put on a list. And, and just for whatever reason, uh, it just never got done. I mean, the the uh, 
It never got done. And so it was recently that I was contacted by the state of Wisconsin and said, hey, you know, we'd kind of like something that, you know, could you could you design us something that that advertises our state series? So, of course, a lot of you saw, you know, Gork did up some some really good artwork for the state series uh, Gold Cup in terms of, of tracks running a state Gold Cup combo race. Uh, and different things like that. And we've started to break apart some of that artwork and, and do different things with it. But when Wisconsin did that, I thought, you know, if I'm going to design something anyways, I might as well go ahead and design the poster that we wanted to do, but never got done and give that back to them as not only the image that they wanted to share on social media, but as a poster that we could print a certain number of and send to all of the tracks in the state to post. So again, the goal of that poster always was to promote awareness of every SCR and PCR at the local level. So as a new kid signs up, you know, or even an existing rider who maybe he's been a member for a couple of years, but he's never really gotten involved with the state series. We're putting this poster, you know, right in his face and going, Hey, here's the state championship series for, for Wisconsin. Uh, as you can see, I downloaded a little, uh, digital outline of Wisconsin plotted roughly where the tracks are on the state. Uh, put a little note in here, riders be sure to race at least four qualifiers in the state. So given that this state has seven or more tracks, it's got to be four qualifiers plus the final to be eligible for a state plate. Also, don't forget that you can earn up to four bonus state points by racing single point races by July 15th. Right. So you're just kind of reminding them of what the rules. So this would be something that would have to at least a number of qualifiers would have to change dynamically, depending on what state we're talking about. Uh, obviously, the state, the map, all of these things. But then, you know, we kind of plotted out, hey, here's all of the state races as they were scheduled at the tracks, uh, requested and got logos from a number of tracks, downloaded the rest and put them into this thing. And and uh and yeah, I mean, I'm going to send this back to all of the tracks in Wisconsin and say, hey, here's a nice JPEG of this. If you want to put this on your website, uh, share it on social media, whatever. Uh, but I also want to do posters, uh, you know, maybe three, four posters for every track in Wisconsin on, you know, nice. Uh, again, those of you who've gotten posters from Prime Source, our, our printing partner now, uh, you know, Prime Source prints that stuff on beautiful coated paper. It's kind of it's kind of UV protected, way better than the posters that we were able to do. And uh, and again, the other thing that this does is it defines the series. No more guessing. You know, we've got some states that had tracks that maybe didn't run ten single point races last year, and they don't have a state race scheduled yet. And the reason they don't is because we've said, hey, you know what? You've got to show me that you're going to run a viable program this year or we're not going to award you a state race. And so, you know, putting the races that are going to happen on something like this shows the riders these races are booked and scheduled. And if it's on here, I can tell the website is great and it's great for, for giving, getting real time information. But, you know, it, it's it's a living, breathing thing. And 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 uh but I love this idea of, of doing these posters and uh, and this is something that I, that I want to do for, for more of the state. So, uh, and again, uh, if you're a track in, in, in a state, check to see that all the, the tracks in your state have scheduled their SCRs. If they're not or PCRs, if they haven't lean on those who haven't to get them scheduled so that your state can request something like this uh, because I, I love it. Uh, all right. So there's that state poster. Uh, one of the other things that, that I did was, uh, you know, just a track saying, Hey, I'd like to do a flyer. I'm having a big weekend and I'd like to do a flyer to get to other tracks. Like, you know, if you've got a good working relationship with other tracks around you, either in your state or neighboring states, and they're going to help promote your big event. Um, uh, sure. So here was a track that sent me, uh, Oh, uh, two, three days ago, sent me, Hey, can you, I, I need something for this, for this race. It's coming up in April. So it's coming up here pretty quick. And this is Lamore BMX, right? So Lamore BMX says, Hey, we've got this, 
600 point weekend state championship race gold cup race um and sent me basically some some details hey here's my sign up times for saturday and sunday uh they said hey we've got camping available at the track first come first serve riders pro shop is going to be there and the mini uh, the micro sprints are going to run on saturday night and so given kind of all of that info you know i went out and fetched some different graphics here and there uh, and now we've got the location contact number. You you see the, uh, the the website right there. We've got the race info right here. The fact that the micro sprints will run on Saturday night. And for people that don't know what micro sprints are, there you go. They're just like a nice little mini sprint that's going to run on a dirt track. Looks like a fun event. It really kind of makes me want to load up my race car and go out there and see if they'll let me hot lap it and and check out that, that event. A uh, fairly new track. And... Uh, Again, so this, these are flyers to give neighboring tracks. They're selling a big weekend, right? And they, they're trying to sell that, hey, you're coming here for the weekend. You can camp, and it's going to be a great weekend of BMX and, and mini sprint racing on, on Saturday night, uh, which is awesome. Promoting the vendor that's going to be there servicing the riders. And uh, so they basically requested 50 of these uh, to give out to other tracks. So that was uh, something that was fun. I know I did a, uh, I did an email blast about this, but on the off chance that somebody didn't see that email, I want to bring this up again. You know, this was something that I had designed a long time ago. Uh, this one was pretty recent. This was for Cobra BMX, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, but this basically came about from uh, Debbie Kelly had gotten well Debbie Debbie Kelly is involved with the Arizona State Games so she does a race uh at Black Mountain it's been at other Arizona tracks as well uh but it's tied to the Arizona State Games and the Arizona State Games has an email list of about 25,000 people so Debbie said you know Brad I got the ability to send out to all of the kids on that Arizona State Games email list and I need something to send to them can you, can you do design me a PDF or whatever? And I said, wow, you know, I mean, PDF of a flyer. Yeah, you could do that. But I mean, that requires that they have a PDF viewer and, and da, 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 da. I go, why don't we just design a nice little image that can be embedded in that, in that, that basically encompasses everything that the Q and a flyer was. It talks about all of the fundamentals of the Q and a, all the questions uh, the discipline, self-esteem, physical fitness, all the key points you want to hit on. Nobody sits on the bench. It's got all the buzzwords of BMX. It has the new kids on blue jeans. It's got the little kids. It's got the parent. I mean, it shows the full range of everything. And if you're a track that, that uh, and I'll tell you the other thing, more and more tracks are finding out school districts are moving away from flyers and going to email newsletters, things like that, right? They're not printing things any, anymore in the name of, of going green. I get school updates from my daughter's school all the time, and they're just PDF attachments. They're not printing out things to send home with the kids anymore. That's just not done. And so uh, so to have this, uh, this is a great piece. And, uh, you know, it is something that I, I think I'd love to. These are all nice cutout riders. Uh, cut out graphics, but they're getting pretty, pretty dated. Uh, you know, the, the one thing that I'd like to do to this is to maybe freshen it up with some, some new graphics here, but this is an outstanding piece. And if you've got the ability to email people, um, I want you to do that. Well, this is going to be curious to see if this is going to play then because, okay, there we go. Social media videos. So some of you saw that I, started playing around with some some new software on uh on you know making little videos that that can be shared on social media uh to try to spread the word of a track. So that was one of my early things that I did and then we started doing some a uh, little more advanced things. This was kind of a fun uh logo thing that I did for Cedar BMX. And, you know, ultimately now what I want to do with some of these, especially ones like that, where um, it was just basically like a logo reveal. So that's cool. It's a cool special effect. But but bookended on a promotional video, I think, is is then the next piece. And so that's what I want to work with uh, with with our own GMO, our own videographer in-house about doing. 
Uh, in fact, Gmo and I have kind of collaborated on on some of the the websites and the tools that I was using to get these these really kind of cutting edge special effects to do that kind of stuff with the logos. Uh, here's another one. Central Texas BMX. Of course, they'll host the last of the uh, world's qualifiers. And so again, with, with the absence of having, you know, actual race footage from your track, which if you, if you're a track that has that, if you have good high def video footage or a, a drone footage, I mean, the, the type of video that we could do for your track uh, to, to share on social media would be incredible. Um, but these things are a lot of fun to do. Um, I have fun. I, I, I design and mess around with these in, in my, in my kind of spare time uh, nights and weekends and stuff. Here's another one that we did. I love the whole search family friendly sport. Uh, actually, I think I had that one already. Let's do this one. See what this one is. And another logo reveal. And again, that was one that I did for that track just uh, just by going to their website and I downloaded their logo and I downloaded three pictures off their website. That's it. The picture of the older the older cruiser rider, the picture of the of the little balance bike riders and their logo. And you assemble all of those things, put some special effects to it and you end up and you end up with that. Uh, and again, something cool to share on social media. It's got some movement to it. You know, it shows that the sport is, you know, for, for all shapes and sizes. And it's all contained in 20 seconds, 20 20.52 seconds. So uh, we're, we're doing those videos now for tracks that, that request them and, and doing a lot, you know, again, a lot more kind of custom design work. So uh, that's about all that I, that I had kind of planned on, on talking about showing some new stuff there. Um, I want to just kind of open up now for, for questions. If anybody has any questions about what's coming down the pipeline or, uh, well, anything at all. I will touch on one more thing, I guess, while I wait and see if anybody has any questions, um, was talking with, with, uh, with Cody Wilson today about, uh, our concussion and uh, concussion protocol. So a lot of, you know, that we've implemented that and we've talked with Cody before on, on these webinars about concussion protocol and what we're doing at the nationals. And, and, and that's something that we want to get out to the local tracks and want the local tracks to be aware of, of, uh, of well, and 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 be aware of the concussion, the concussion rules in your state. So, we've got tracks in Washington that have found out, for example, that Washington State has a specific law about uh, sports entities and concussion protocol, especially with regard to youth sports. So they expect that you are handing out uh, concussion awareness information to the the uh, to the parent. And that you're getting signed proof that the parent received uh, that concussion information. So Cody did up a, a absolutely outstanding sheet on concussion symptoms and everything uh, that, that I forwarded to a track in Washington. Uh, okay, so I'm going to, you know, I, I, so Chelsea asked a great question here. And, uh, and, and I'm, I guess I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. So let me, uh, let me pull up. And I'm going to give credit where credit is due here too for the track that that gave me the, the the idea when I stumbled on it on their website, and that is so. Let me pull this up, and I'm going to talk about the the absolutely again the outstanding idea that that probably was was Kyle and and the folks at Southern Maryland BMX uh, 
had done this on their website and, and they're using, they're using their own website. It's a, it's a beautiful website, nice WordPress website. Uh, done a lot of websites myself, so I know, but the question was best practices for recruiting track volunteers. So let's get to what they did. And I loved this. Okay. So here comes their, their beautiful WordPress site. Uh, awesome website. And I mean, just look at, so we're showing good pictures and everything. Now, what the what you don't see on this website is the minute I love the crab. Is that a new logo? I don't think I've ever seen that logo. That's outstanding. It's like a crab with a crest. I love it. So what you don't see here right now is you don't see any any forms or anything, right? Like so when you go on the USA BMX website and you go to certain areas, if I go to events, for example, nationals, and I say, hey, you know what? I want to go in and pre-sign for this thing. You should see a little chat thing down here. See that? Please leave us a message, right? So this is the after hour is kind of, hey, we're not here, but you can leave us a message. Watch what Southern Maryland does. The minute I scroll this page, there it comes. We need your help, it says. I know that's going to be hard to read. It says, we need your help. So uh, Southern Maryland BMX is operated by volunteers and we need your help. If you are interested in being a volunteer, sign up below. You will start receiving emails regarding track work days and any other volunteer opportunities that might arise. First name, last name, email, and submit. This was a brilliant idea and implementation of the idea by Southern Maryland. And I saw that and I went, you know what? That's great. And Every track that is using a microsite needs that. And whether they want it or not, they're going to get it. Because guess what? Not only, and, and what I loved, I love this. And again, it's, it's you click on any page on this website, uh, well, except that one, because that takes you to ours. <laughs> click on any page on their website and it pulls up the page. But the minute I scroll, did I find the one page that it doesn't do it on? Or maybe, did they only put it? I thought they had it on every page. Let me go back to the home page. Go back to the home page. I scroll. Here comes the form. So, uh, so again, I, what we're going to do is the microsites of all the tracks, which again, I mean, if I pull up, uh, sure. And you know what? Here, Farmer City was a good example because Farmer City, when I, when I did Farmer City's, I use Farmer City and, and Renee, if you're on here, I don't think you, uh, maybe, where is it? Was that the page? Maybe I removed it. Nope, it's here. There it is. Yeah. Setting up new rider profile. So uh, I set this up as a, hey, you know what? Could we do this? And this was great. This would have worked. This would have worked for us, but and this is really kind of the, the data that I wanted to gather. So our form, a uh, little bit more info than what Southern Maryland is going to ask for. Uh, home phone, mobile phone, email, what positions are you in? And any comments or questions that they might have, right? But then when they hit submit, I wanted to do two things. Number one, I wanted to email whatever the track email address is on file so that you've got an email saying, hey, here's this person who wants to volunteer. But the other thing I want to do is I want this information stored in a database so that you could go back at any time and see anybody who's ever offered to help at your track. And guess what? For us, it gives us a great database of volunteers. If we're going to go into a national and we don't, maybe we, we're going into a, to a national and we've had an official back out on us and we need to find somebody at the last minute. Now I can tap into that database and find officials that are in the area that have experience maybe in staging or out on the track or on the back of the hill, whatever the case may be, uh, we have that database. So uh, again, I'm glad you asked the question. Uh, I know the programmers, well, they were going to start development of that form. So we've laid that out. This should be a very quick thing to get developed. I'm hoping that they'll have that thing done within the next mm, two to three weeks at the latest, they should be able to get that knocked out. And maybe a lot sooner, depends on how many resources they allocate to it. But 
Uh, glad you asked the question, Chelsea, because I guess then I can let the cat out of the bag there. Uh, how do district points work for a Gold Cup state combo race? Well, it's a triple district point race. I mean, it, you basically, if, if your state race was going to be a double, the Gold Cup always is a triple. Uh, it, it just takes the higher of those. So it's just a triple point race in terms of district points. It also gets you points towards the state championship series and towards the Gold Cup series. But in terms of district points, it's triple district points. Um... Who do we contact about creating a video similar to the ones that we showed? Uh, shoot me an email. And then, uh, you know, uh, again, I, if, if all of that stuff comes through our department, we can try to get it to other people to do. Um, uh, again, you know, you, we've got Gmo in office who, who's uh, an amazing videographer. He is outstanding in some of that software that it's fun for me to go in and, and play around. Uh, there's a, a product called Adobe After Effects, but it's a very expensive program. Uh, it's a very hard learning curve to do things in Adobe After Effects, uh, but you can do some amazing things and it's a very fun program to play in. You know, I've dabbled in doing design work, web design, graphic design, um, and, and I do that stuff. I do that stuff on the side to try to pay for my dirt car racing habit, but uh, I only play around in it, and Gmo is a professional. So uh, I'll try to email me. I'll try to get that work to Gmo. If Gmo gets backed up uh, or the art department gets backed up, I can bang out designs too. Uh, it's one of those things that, you know, I I'll say that uh, the people who sign my paycheck uh, prefer that I not do what we have other people to do. Um, but when they get backed up and you guys need things, then I can bang them out. Uh, because I'm kind of a, a jack of all trades, master of none, I guess. Uh, do I have time offline for a quick chat? You know what, Todd? Give me a shout tomorrow because right after this, and what time? It's six o'clock now, straight up. Okay, perfect. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to blaze and go pick up my my boy and and get home. And then once I hit home, I should have my my two buddies that help me on my race team ready to go to get brake lines put in my car so that we can take it to get wired so that I can race next Saturday. So yeah, I'm going to be buried tonight, but give me a shout tomorrow, Todd, or anytime this weekend should slow down for me too. You got my cell phone number. Uh, who do I contact to get help doing the microsite? Man, uh, really anybody in, in the track department. Um, you know, Bill Curtin's excellent at doing web work. Cody's excellent at doing web work. Uh, Tyson's getting really, really good at, at, at tweaking things on the microsite. Connie's kind of dabbling in, in doing some things here and there. Some of us are better in, in doing, uh, certain things than, than others like, uh, Adobe Photoshop and, and editing photos and stuff. You know, I'm kind of decent at that. Um, but I mean, just get a hold of anybody because if there's anything that one of those other guys can't do, they'll shoot me a logo and say, Hey, Brad, you know, this track's logo has an ugly white border around it and they're using a dark theme. Can you knock the background and put a glow effect on it, right? So we just kind of all work together like that. So Don, just shoot any of us in the track department an email and we'll get you get you sorted out. Bill Curtin was on the phone the other day with a track operator and he's like, oh yeah, that video or that, uh, it, it was the same deal. It was a logo. And, uh, and he said, well, just email Brad. And I heard him two cubicles away. <laughs> talking to this track while he's on the phone, I pulled that in, opened it up in Photoshop, did the glow effect, uploaded it. And I told him, Hey, Bill, just hit refresh. Have him hit refresh. <laughs> and it was done in about 15 seconds, blew the guy's mind. So yeah, just email anybody. All right. What else is going on? Anything else in speaking? So, uh, you know, talk about the software and stuff that we use. So here's some, um, yeah, here's here's one, for example, that I did for my little web, web design stuff. <laughs> so you can do some just really, really cool effects with logos. Uh, I took the 40-year logo and downloaded a video of some clouds. And uh, and just look what, uh, again, as opposed to putting a static logo on your page and saying, hey, please share this, right? 
I mean, look at how much more mesmerizing that logo is when you've got that floating by in the background. You're just, it's, it's still just a logo, but now there's movement behind it. And so uh, again, it's, it's, a. Uh, I've always kind of messed around in doing graphic design type stuff, but more like never really video stuff. It was always just Photoshop and editing and flyer designs and stuff like I, oh, and here's, so when I talk about, um, when I talk about taking something like the uh, Cedar BMX video and putting a real video in front of it, that's like a race promo, uh, imagine Imagine this, but with a different voiceover, right? So this was something that Gmo, and I'll get Gmo to, to do another one of these that were basically just edit the thing to say 2017. But look at this video for the uh, Olympic day, if you never saw it. Olympic day is a celebration for youth around the world to observe the Olympic values of fair play, perseverance, respect, and sportsmanship. It is also a day to celebrate the International Olympic Committee's three pillars, move, learn, and discover. USA BMX has joined forces with the United States Olympic Committee to offer a free day of BMX racing at participating BMX tracks around the United States. For more information on how to get involved, visit usabmx.com. Gmo even did the voiceover for that one. So yeah, there's some amazing things that you can do with some of this video editing software. And again, you take a, a video like that, uh, you take some race footage, some footage just zooming, something as simple as zooming in on a little kid, switch it to black and white, zoom in and look at how powerful that is in the beginning. Add some special effects with your track logo. Again, like, you know, if, if I were to take that video and do like this Cedar logo reveal at the end of that video, that would be a nice, powerful piece, you know, contact, maybe throw the website down here, Cedar BMX. Well, it's right there, but maybe bigger for people to see cedarbmx.com, do a little voiceover. You can do some incredible things. And, uh, and that really like Facebook videos now and stuff, videos on social media, everybody's getting uh, unlimited data or near unlimited data. And that's kind of the wave, wave of the future. How can I use the track operator system on a Mac? Um, so you're looking at the fact that I'm on a Mac and going, I want to run the software on a Mac, right? Is that kind of the question, Jody? Because if it is, the answer is you have to have Windows on your Mac because the race manager software uh, is all written in, in Microsoft.net. It utilizes Microsoft SQL Server, which only runs in Windows. But as you can see down here, I'm running Windows 7. Uh, so I've got an instance of Windows 7 running on my system. I can immediately switch over into Windows. And there's, uh, there's for example, the report that I ran to take that screenshot uh, of the Kevin Riedemann race. So any other track right now wanted to say, hey, how many riders did I get at my track? Uh, uh, there we go. We'll, we'll do 1623, which should be Chesapeake, right? Uh, oh, transport level. There we go. It's going to run now. There we go. So there we go. We've hit five races. These riders hit five races. Here's the date that they hit five races. Uh, and you can see that there's the riders with four races. But if Chesapeake just wanted to focus on the riders that hit five, uh, how many are there? There were, there's 25 of them that have hit five races so far. So, uh, so yeah. So the answer is how do you, how do you run it on a Mac? Uh, just have a Mac that's capable of putting Windows. I use Parallels, but there's other things that you can that you can use to to run a Windows platform. Yeah, and the bummer is is if you don't already like Parallels is like a fifty nine, maybe seventy nine dollar program, and plus a licensed copy of Windows. So I mean, you'd have some money into it, but it certainly can be done. Uh, nearly all of us in the office are on Macs. Everybody. And like the membership department is all running Windows-based software, uh, but we run Macs uh, mostly just for the fact that you we're almost impervious to viruses with with Macs. Uh, so all of our email and everything is on the Mac platform, and and uh, and but for for the rest of us who travel and stuff, uh, you know, Macs are we just swear by them. 
but you've got to be able to run Windows on it. All right, any other questions? I got another about two minutes before I've got to bolt and go pick up my little guy, my little four-year-old, who's actually, he's, he's starting to race Strider now. He was just kind of walking around the track and looking around and now he's getting competitive. Of course, the first race that he did, he crossed the finish line, wouldn't shake the hand of any other kids and, and was just upset that he, that he didn't, uh, didn't do well. Uh, but, but now he's, he's taking it better and, and, uh, and he's, he's hopefully gonna, gonna still be competitive, but without that, I'm angry. I didn't win thing. Uh, Good question. Can more than one computer be used for a track? Of course. Yeah, we, we do that at the nationals all the time. Um, a lot of tracks are, are utilizing multiple systems. Essentially, what ends up happening, Carrie, is that you designate one computer to be the quote unquote master. And that just means that that computer is going to be the one that has the database on it. Uh, both of them will have a database, but that's the only one that has serial numbers. And the other computer points to the database on what is the master, right? So I have one track I talked to last week was like, well, I got two, com two computers and uh, you know, one of them's newer than the other. I want that one to be the master. And then we got the, you know, the other one. And so, but what if I, I want to have two computers set up and, and working for when I have a bigger race, but I might just only bring one computer out to the track on a normal night. And I said, well, then again, it's you need to know that if you're only going to bring one computer, it's got to be the master, right? Because that's going to be the one that has the serial numbers in it. And uh, and you only bring the other computer when you're going to hook it up to be able to run two lines. But it's very, very easy to do. Uh, one thing I will say, there's two ways to do it. I recommend that you just go buy a $20 or $30 uh, router. So then you can just hook those computers into the router with a with a Cat5 cable and please use cables to network your computers. Do not, do not use a wireless network to send and receive data. It might work, but the problem happens in uh, if the wireless signal drops while the database is in the middle of doing a database transaction. If something fails in a database transaction, the database should roll everything back. But when it's a wireless network, it's just buggy. And so if you're using a wireless network and you call me or Bill Curtin and you say, hey, I've got a problem. I was running this such and such on my race and over the wireless network. And then this happened and the network went down and now my database is corrupt. I mean, it's, it's just kind of one of those, you know, track operator beware things if you're going to run wireless. So please wire your network if you're going to do that. Um, so you can do it with a router. The other way you can do it, which you can hook them up with a what's called a crossover cable. It looks just like a Cat5 cable, but it's a specific type of network cable called a crossover, uh, crossover cable. And it allows you to, to hook one computer directly into another computer without a router. Uh, that's it only saves you 20 to 30 bucks and you've got to know a little bit about computers because you'll have to give those computers an IP address, an internet, uh, an, an IP ad internet protocol address. So again, I recommend going the way of the router um, and it's very, very easy to do. And then in terms of the race manager program, uh, what you'll do is going to look something like this. Uh, when this, when the program is running, you can go into file preferences, go into other options. There's a thing here that says database server. Now by default, it says local, which means it's using the database on this machine, but I can hit change and I can hit refresh. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna go out on my network and it's gonna look for any other machines that are on this network that are running an instance of SQL server that I could possibly connect to. So now it's done, and now when I hit this drop down, there's all the other machines that are running SQL Server that I could choose to connect to. So if I want to tap into, for example, the membership server or Jen's machine, right? So there's Jennifer who goes to all the races. Her machine typically has the database from the last national there. 
So I select Jennifer's machine, I hit test connection, it says, hey, the database server connection is good. I save it, voila, now I'm looking at Jen's machine and there's the Cajun Nationals. If I go back into my machine, other options, database server, change, refresh, let it go look, and I'm gonna change that back to local. And I go in and look at, there you go, no occasion. So it's very, very easy to do, <clears throat> easy to do, excuse me. And uh, again, myself, Bill Curtin, Cody, all of us can talk you through it once you get all the pieces that you need. All right, any other questions? All right, I've gone four minutes over. So now I've got to speed to go get my kid or I pay a lot of money for every minute that I'm late. All right, so the master computer must always be used to track my master's a laptop. If I can't be there, the other one cannot. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, what we can, in the rare instance that that might happen, I mean, we could give you another range of numbers, but I can tell you it's something that we don't, we don't like to give out two numbers, two ranges of numbers, but we could give you a very tiny range of numbers on that other computer. So always in a pinch, if you call and say, hey, you know, I've got this problem where, you know, uh, I, I, my computer, I, I lost my laptop and I've got a race tonight. So I downloaded the program. I got it running on this laptop. I got no numbers. You know, you can call us on our cell phones and we're going to give you a range of numbers. That's not an issue. So, uh, you know, don't, don't worry about that. Don't let that stop you from from doing that. So we'll always make sure that you've got what you need. Um, all right, guys, well, I want to thank everybody that logged on. I'm going to go ahead and end the recording. We'll get this pushed up uh, to the TO dashboard for everybody who didn't make it, or if you want to share it with your volunteers. And uh, if you have any other questions that come up, just contact me or my staff. Thanks, guys, and have a great weekend.